So we had looked into a few concepts where, you know, we discussed about CDMA, right? The technologies involved in CDMA and why it was much better than um, GSM technologies, right? Um, mainly because of the uh, connectivity and, uh, you know, uh, the, the type of, you know, circuitry that helps or enables to have lower uh, power consumption due to which, you know, you were able to have enhanced uh, uh, battery features, right? So these were, you know, few things where, you know, you were able to um, judge the importance of uh, CDMA. And one more thing is, you know, even, uh, even if the signal is low, okay, your voice doesn't break on CDMA network. Unlike um, GSM networks where, you know, your voice does break if, if the signal goes low because it's transmitted in packets, right? So some packets tend to uh, miss out. But in CDMA, that doesn't happen. Um, you know, there could be a delay, but then, uh, you know, voice is never um, broken or, you know, you will feel that continuity, but there can be slight delay. So, you know, these were <laughs> some of the things that we looked into, right? So because of this feature, uh, you know, the, the, the times that the phone connects to the tower, okay, updates itself to the, to the signal tower, is actually you know, less and uh, you know, due to which the battery backup also goes high. Fine. So today, you know, we'll be looking into a few problems and uh, concepts and uh, those problems that I have picked up is, you know, uh, about the TDM system, okay, which is uh, time division multiplexing, where, you know, I think all of you are aware what is multiplexing and demultiplexing, right? Multiplexing is where you have multiple signals and then you select and then you, you put it out at the output side. And uh, yeah, so time division multiplexing. So this is then based on time. So time is taken as reference and this uh, multiplexing is done. Just like how we had discussed, you know, a uh, few, uh, few time frame is given, right, uh, for your call. And uh, after that time frame, you know, it gets disconnected. So which means a channel is allocated to you only for a certain duration of time but after that okay you cannot expect uh, the channel to be yours so <laughs> the call gets disconnected and um, you know the channel is allocated to someone else and then when you reconnect the channel a new fresh channel is allocated to you so which means you are not you know allocated a channel for a long time unlike cdma you know even for eight hours nine hours the channel is allocated it's that channel is dedicated to you, right? So you can have your communication for any amount of time. Okay, so this is a TDM system um, having 12 channels and employs a channel time slot of six microseconds. So I will, as I was telling, each you know, communication you know, channel or each time division is based on, uh, each division is based on time so here each division is about six microseconds. So here they're telling us to calculate uh, the sample rate for each channel. So what is the frequency? Ultimately, when I say rate, it becomes frequency, right? Okay, so we have the formula, okay? Fs is equal to one, okay? That is your sampling frequency is equal to one divided by N into Ts. So that is your sampling time. So we know that, you know, um, it's about six microseconds, right? And uh, for N, we employ the number of channels. So one divided by 12 into six micro. Can someone verify this value if it's correct? Just check and let me know if it's correct. Getting about 13.88 kilohertz. Yes, sir. It's proper, no? Yeah. Right. So, so only thing that you know you'll have to remember here is uh, the formula, and then uh, you know rest is just substitution of this formula. Okay. 
So the number of channels in uh, uh, the system of part B uh, is to be increased to 14. Okay, so now we have 12 here. So we'll try to increase it to 14. Calculate the new value of time slot. So here, you know, they're telling us to find the value of T. Okay, initially T was given to us, which is six microseconds. So the, the other way around now. Okay, fine. So, so since, uh, you know, it's just a cross multiplication. So what I will do, I will take FS and TS, you know, to, uh, I will invert them. Okay, cross multiply with them. And uh, I'm going to get the value, okay, 14. 14 is already given to us, which is the number of channels uh, into, okay, N into, and this frequency. So we are utilizing the above frequency, same frequency we are using. But then we want the channels to be increased and we just want to know how much of uh, time. So it is just like you have three parameters here. You have frequency, number of channels and time. So here you are given with how many channels and you're given with uh, the time frame, and then you are asked to calculate the frequency. So here in this problem, we are trying to find out T and N and F we have already, um, we already have them and we'll be just using. Okay, so we find out that, you know, if the number of channels are increased to about 14, okay, then the time is going to be reduced. Okay, so you can see that each time allocated for the channel is coming down to 5.14, unlike six microseconds, right? Now, if I increase the sampling rate, which means if I increase the frequency F to about 14, then what happens to this TS? So the same formula, okay, one divided by 14 into, and they're telling us to use 18 kilohertz. So I'm going to come up with a value, which is about 3.96 microseconds, right? So as you increase the frequency, right, the time is going to, get reduced okay so i think this part is clear isn't it now you might be wondering sir why do we need to calculate all this is it necessary right so during uh, uh, you know during uh, uh, deciding as to how much users that this tower is going to serve and uh, at what frequency i'm going to operate right so this kind of calculations are really needed Okay, um, how many channels I need to give at what frequency I need to operate and what is going to be, you know, the distance that it's going to cover. See, that's why you see most of this uh, signal towers to be on top, right? You, you don't find any, um, you know, signal towers on ground. So that's, you know, that's because here in our city, you know, there are very high, a lot of high rise buildings. So because of this high rise buildings, there can be a lot of attenuation. Attenuation is nothing but loss. Right, so we do not want to have, you know, uh, kind of uh, lost or low graded signal, right? So thereby it doesn't suffice to communication. So what we do is we try to have um, a better reception of signal. So better reception is always good because there won't be any drop in packets. Just like I had mentioned previously, due to you know this gsm networks you know sending information in the form of packets and there can be a loss of information right so here also uh, you know we try to keep this towers on on top okay as high as possible so that there can be uh, you know less loss if it was the other way around if we were using cdma networks you know then um, you know there can be time delay but here we we cannot have that luxury of having time delay uh, because the information itself is going to get lost. So this kind of, you know, bits and pieces of information is going to help you, like, you know, the sampling rate. Um, do you all know what is a sampling rate? I think BSP uh, you all are studying right now, isn't it? What is sampling? Sampling, what is it? You would have studied, right, in your theory. So 
like determining the number of samples of the particular system mm, yeah that is it is like um, you know the sampling is where you know uh, it is taken two times of the maximum frequency right at least greater than or equal to two times the uh, frequency so if if this condition is met okay then you are going to have a proper signal and uh, your communication is going to be good so you know that is what is called the sampling rate okay so basically at what frequency you have to uh, operate and uh, uh, you know to have a better communication with less loss okay that's the basic idea right now there are few you know benefits of using uh, time division multiplex systems okay so there can be less noise and uh, the cable plant utilization costs are very less so the cables that you use for these uh, you know the costs are very low and there can be less noise fine the next interesting concept you know that we'll be looking into is pam Uh, which is PAM and PWM and PPM. Have you come across these terms? Yeah, these terms have you come across? Okay. No, so you will be actually looking into these concepts um, in your analog communication, digital communication exclusively, right? So you know this, <clears throat> you know this uh, technical aptitude is actually going to help you not only theoretically, but then it's also going to help you to enhance your information about all these um, kinds of communication and you know basically those concepts which will be asked for your interviews. right so pam is nothing but pulse amplitude modulation okay so first what we will do we will look at these diagrams right so you will be able to understand in a much better way okay so you have a sinusoidal wave here okay going to its highs and lows in positive and negative cycle and uh, you can see that you know you, we have a sampling signal as i told you sampling signal will be two times fm okay the maximum frequency So FM is nothing but the maximum two times FM. So <clears throat> you say if I'm up, if my signal frequency is about two point five, okay, two point five hertz, just an example, kilohertz, then I'm going to use five kilohertz for sampling. Okay, so so this is going to act as my you know carrier information, which is high frequency, right? So you need someone to uh, take your message, right? Your message cannot go on its own. right you need to transport your message from one point to another right so the carrier frequency okay so this is called a carrier uh, which actually takes the information the uh, message signal and then passes from one point to another so usually these carrier signals are made higher which means that their frequencies are much higher than the message signals okay so yeah so now when we talk about pam pulse amplitude modulation you can see that you know wherever it is going high okay it's taking the shape of this carrier signal okay you can see that you know the outline right so pulse amplitude modulation so as the pulse goes high even this one also goes high but then it actually takes the property of the carrier frequency also okay so now having understood this right so we will now move on to the theoretical information pulse amplitude modulation is a technique in which the amplitude of each pulse is controlled by the instantaneous amplitude of modulation signal so that's why you know you are able to get this shape now say for example this is being too high right this is being too high 
So here also you will get a signal which is high. And let us take this, this portion for example, right? So here it is very less you know, to, the, to the normal line. So here also you can find that this is, you know, the height or the amplitude of this is low. So you can see that each at each point the amplitudes are varying, right? The pulse amplitude is varying. So hence it is termed as pulse amplitude modulation. So the amplitude of the signal is changed varying in PWM, which is width, okay? So based on the signal, okay, based on this signal, okay, the width of the signal is changing, okay? So and then we have PPM, pulse position, okay? So the position of the signal is changed, okay? So this is the amplitude cycle and this is the time cycle, okay? Yeah, so here you can see you know, all the signals, I have put up all the signals here. Yeah. So pulse amplitude, okay, the amplitudes are changing, right? And in pulse width, you can see that all are having the same height, but then the width of each signal is changed. You can find that this is very thin and this is very broad, right? So as the signal goes high, the signal becomes broad. So that is width, change in width, but here change in amplitude, this becomes high and the position, right? This is moved towards the right. And as it is less, okay, it comes towards the left. So here it's negative. So it's fully towards the left, okay? It, it comes this side. So the position of these signals do change. Here the width of the signal is changed and here the height of the signal is changed. So have you understood this concept, PAM, PWM, and PPM? Yes? Yes, sir. So basically, you know, try to understand that PAM amplitude is changed. PWM amplitudes are all same, but the width, you can see that, you know, this width is more than this width, okay? That is because it is corresponding to this signal here. So this signal is actually a message signal and I'm, I'm passing a message signal here, M of T, right? So this is on my negative side. So, you know, it changes. Now, if you see the positive side, right, the positive high, so then it is towards this line. So you can see that, you know, the positions of these signals are changing. So the mostly you know, widely used is uh, PAM and PWM. PPM we do not use much. Okay. So pulse amplitude modulation is a technique in which the amplitude of each signal is controlled by instantaneous amplitude of message signal. Now this amplitude is controlled not by the carrier signal, but by the message, okay? Which, which was the first signal that I showed you. It is a modulation system in which the signal is sampled at regular intervals at, and each sample is made proportional to the amplitude of the signal. Right? So the signal is made proportional to what? The amplitude. So that's important. So if the signal is going high, okay, if the signal is going, you know, extremely towards the positive side, then you can see that the amplitude, the height of this signal also does increase. But there's, there's a catch here, okay? This technique transmits the data by encoding in the amplitude of the series of the signal pulses. So only the amplitude we should check here. We should not check the width or we should not check the position. So here our concentration is only the amplitude of that signal, right? <laughs> Demodulation is performed by detecting the amplitude level of the carrier at every single period. Okay, single period is going to be in you know, a positive half and the negative positive cycle and the negative cycle. So that's going to be a single period. So PAM is a technique that is also used in PCM. Okay, pulse coded modulation. Okay, so there are two types of uh, sampling techniques. Um, one is called the flat top and the other one is called natural uh, PAM. So flat top is nothing but you know, this, this thing that you are seeing, okay, we, we will 
not make it in this fashion, but we will just make this to be flat. Okay. And the other one is natural PAM. So this one that you are you are seeing here is a natural PAM. Okay. Fine. So PWM is pulse width. As you have seen, the width changes. A pulse width modulation signal is a method for generating an analog signal using a distant digital source. A PWM signal consists of two main components that define its behavior, duty cycle and frequency. Now, can you tell me what is duty cycle? What is duty cycle? Have you come across this duty so cycle? Is, is it the comparison of the uh, of the time duration when the particular system is on to when mm. it's off? Yes. So it is referring to when your signals are going high and low. How much for how much duration? Okay. Say, you know, it's going high for seventy five percent of the time and twenty five percent is going off. So based on this, you know, we calculate the duty cycle. Okay. Frequency, of course, you all know right yeah i have mentioned it here the duty cycle describes the amount of time the signal is high as a percentage of the total time it takes to complete one cycle so let us say it's high for about two cycles out of four okay so so it is two okay by four so it becomes 50 percent isn't it so 50 percent of the time it is high so this is how it is calculated. Now let us say, uh, you know, it is three out of four, then it becomes 75%, right? Okay. So at the denominator, you will have total time. And at the numerator, you will have, you know, the on uh, when it is high, how many pulses. The frequency determines how fast the PWM uh, completes a cycle. Okay, so as the frequency of the signal increases, you can find that you know these signals will be packed to each other, right? It will be much closer. Now I can say that this frequency is lower because you know it is it is it is apart, which means it's it's free flowing, right? The frequency is less. Okay. So when I say thousand hertz, it means thousand cycles per second. Okay, so it's calculated per second and therefore how fast it switches between high and low states. By cycling a digital signal off and on at a fast enough rate and within certain duty cycle, the output will appear to behave like a constant voltage analog signal and providing power to devices. Okay, so as we have seen here, Okay, the width changes. So I can say that you know this is 50% duty cycle. This is 90%. So as as the duty cycle increases, right, you can see that the pulse width also does change. Okay, so this is 10% duty cycle and 50% uh, and 90%. So this can be varied. Okay, this can be varied. So I've put up another example here. You know where when I say 10%, okay, and I draw a line. Okay, so it, it's only you know this much amount, and here you know it's taking half of the time, half of the pulses, and here about ninety percent. So you know this is one way of understanding uh, the pulse with modulated signals. PWM is a modulation process or technique used in most communication systems for encoding amplitude of a signal. Uh, right into pulse width. So the relationship here is amplitude of message signal, width of your output signal. Okay. Usually a carrier signal for transmission. Although PWM is used in communications, its main purpose is actually to control the power that is supplied to various types of electrical devices. So you can uh, imagine this AC motors, DC motors, right? So 
in all of these motors, we are going to use PWM signals, pulse width modulated signals. So as we increase the width of the signal, then you know, your motor will start rotating faster. If the width of the signal is reduced, then I'm just giving certain amount of you know, voltages to them, just like how you saw here, right? So a certain amount of voltages, which means I'm reducing the voltage and the motor reduces. You can just imagine your uh, you know, uh, fan, okay, that you have and the regulator. So as you increase the regulator, it's like you know increasing the width of the signal, whereby you are you are giving more uh, you know way for current to pass through, and the rotation speed of your motor increases, right? Okay. Fine. So any doubts up till this concept, students? PWM and uh, PAM. Any doubts? Is it clear? Yes. No. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what we will do is, you know, we will uh, continue with our discussion, okay, with uh, PPM, okay, because this is a very interesting concept. Uh, we can learn as to how these signals are shifting, okay, how the signals are shifting from one point to another, okay. Fine. So can we end our uh, lecture today? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you.